and welcome back to my little corner of the internet. My name is Lilith and for today's video I'm going to talk to you about a couple of productivity apps. Specifically Asana versus Notion. I have now used both of these for a few months of time. Not at the same time but like I've used both of them individually for a few months and I want to talk to you guys about my experience. But before we get into that, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss a video from me. And drop a like on this video, it helps so, so much. This year, while I was researching my bullet journal spreads, I kept seeing a notion pop up. I hadn't seen it pop up in past years when I was researching other people's spreads and how they plan and stuff like that. And I know now that Notion has been around for a long time and I wonder why I had never seen anything about it until this year. At the time I was using Asana as my content calendar and my bullet journal to plan the rest of my life. You guys know that I do a digital bullet journal and I will link that above and below so that you can go check out my 2021 digital bullet journal spread, but here's the thing. I haven't been using it as much because I found Notion. Now, in this video, I'm not gonna go over how I plan my life. That is a whole separate video that I definitely can make, but that is not what this is. This video is just me comparing Asana and Notion so that you have a little bit more information on both of these apps so you can decide if you would like to use one for your own productivity and planning and stuff like that. So when I first started using Asana, I was using it with the free trial and when you pay for the app, you get access to a lot more. So in that free trial, I had access to a lot more things. Now, the main thing that I had access to that I didn't when I free, when my free trial ended and I switched to the free version was tagging. So on my Kanban board, I had all of the content that I was creating. And some of it was for YouTube, some of it was for Instagram, some of it was for TikTok. And I was using tags to easily see at a glance which thing was for which because I only had one editing column, one filming column. I knew everything I needed to film that day for all of the platforms and everything I needed to edit for all of the platforms. And when that went away, it did really suck. So I started having to put at the beginning of the title what that specific thing was for. It was a little bit harder to just see at a glance because it wasn't colored, but I could still see by looking at my list what each thing was for. Another thing with Asana free trial and paid version is timeline view. In Asana, you can view your you can view your project in many different forms: Kanban board, list, calendar, timeline, and I think a couple others. Same with Notion. You can look at your data in a few different ways without having to recreate the data in that way. You can click a button and it'll switch the way your chart looks. As for moving data around automatically within your project or your database. Asana makes that really easy with what's called rules. You can go in and set up a rule without needing to know how to write script or formulas, anything like that. With Notion, you can pull off the same things and you can pull off a lot more, but you have to learn how to write within their code, within their formula. And I myself don't know how to do that. I've been trying to figure it out for a couple of weeks now um, and I have enlisted my partner now to help me since he actually codes he, he knows um, so he's gonna help me put that together and once that's together I will make a video about how I plan and release my templates but I don't have that figured out right now so I'm having to move things myself manually which is fine but it'll be really cool once I have it set up to do that additional features that notion has that Asana doesn't because Asana is quite um, bare bones compared to Asana is very much for project managing, whereas Notion is very much more of a whole, basically digital bullet journal and has so much more involved. I like that Notion had a built-in content calendar template, so I had a really quick, easy place to start. That was nice. And even if you don't make content, if you make continuous, even if you do continuous projects, this form of calendar might be very helpful to you. One thing that Notion has that Asana does not, and I've actually talked to an Asana representative and they have suggested this to their uh, team, to whatever team needs to know about these kind of suggestions, but card templates. So in Notion, I can click new and I can click whatever template I've made. Now that card, that project is my template. Within Asana, 
whenever I add a new card to the project, I have to duplicate an old card if I want to keep using the same template that I made, erase the information, and start from there. There's no way to be like, add this card template to my project. I found that I really did not like that. I really love that Notion has those templates and that you can make templates for like anything and everything. For my YouTube videos, I need one template. For my TikTok videos, I need another template. For Instagram posts or blog posts, I need a different kind of template. So I really love that I have all of those templates saved. I love that Notion has so many templates and such a huge online community to share templates. Although I tend to prefer to create my own. I might start out using somebody else's template, but I'm going to tweak it and I'm gonna take bits and pieces from it and create my own templates from that. So I took the mood board template and put that into my organization for my website because I need to create a mood board for my website that is currently being worked on. While Asana really focuses on work and managing projects, Notion focuses on, focuses on being customizable in a way that you can organize life and work and play and everything in one place, which I really enjoy. So it might start to sound like I am rooting for Notion more than Asana. I honestly think that there are great uses for both and I have found that Notion works best for me just to be upfront and honest. That doesn't mean I don't like Asana as well, but I just figured you guys should know why I because I feel like I'm talking up Notion a lot when Asana might be better for you. And I don't want it to seem like I'm talking down Asana. I think Notion is really great for people that like tracking things digitally. My partner really likes tracking things digitally, so I'm trying to get him to try Notion. But I, as y'all know, I like to track things digitally. That's why my bullet journal is digital. But I feel like Notion has made my planning even easier than that digital bullet journal. That's why I... I've kind of switched over to almost fully using Notion. Not completely, but I have a large majority of stuff. One of the things that I like about Asana better than Notion is I like I like the look of the Kanban board better. You can choose your own background and I just like the look of their cards and the their columns and all of that a little bit better. That disregards usability. I'm just talking about the way it looks aesthetically. And Asana treats each board, each set of data as one project. It thinks that each card inside of its project is just a piece to that bigger project. I know this because I spoke to one of the Asana representatives and he was quite confused as I explained to him, no, each individual card is the project for me, not the whole thing, a big project. Each card is a YouTube video is a TikTok video each of those is a single project for me and it does kind of all lead up to my bigger goals but I'm never gonna be finished with that content calendar with that page I'm never gonna just want to move on to the next one that is where I organize my content you know the way they have it set up is that you can archive that entire page that whole set of data and move on to another project and I know that you can also archive stuff in Notion and start a whole new project if you wanted to, which is really cool that you can set up archives. I like that, that both of them offer that like archive function, even if they do it in different ways. In Asana, I would write the details of my YouTube videos in the little details section. I don't know if I could put a table in there. As in Notion, I have a table that is for my shot list, so I write down each shot that I want to take and where I need to film it, when I need to film it, all that. I didn't have that kind of function in Asana. So the rules and the tags are both something that is in the paid for version of Asana, whereas you get those things for free in Notion. But in Notion, I believe when it's free, you only have yourself. With Asana, even the free version, you can have multiple people. I don't remember exactly how many it is, but it might be like 10 or more. Like it's a lot of people that you can have in one board. And I was using a board in there for my website so that my partner and I both had access to it. And when I stopped using it, well, he doesn't have access to my Notion. And you know, eventually I might pay for Notion whenever I get a editor or something like that that needs, that needs access to shared projects, but We'll cross that bridge when we get there.
So Notion is a lot. We, we've talked about how it's a lot more than just your project manager or calendar. It is a lot and that means there's a lot to learn. And while there's tons and tons and tons of YouTube videos to teach you how to do these things, it is a lot and it can be really overwhelming when you first jump in. So if you are looking for something that's much simpler, Asana is definitely... Hello, editing. Look here. My camera cut out while I was making my next point, which was in my written bullet journal. I use a mixture of bullet points and dashes. And in Notion, you can't use dashes. You have like bullet points, check boxes, and numbers. You don't have dashes. Usually I would use the bullet points as my to do's and the dashes as my notes. But in Notion, I have to use the check boxes as my to do's and the bullet points as my notes because that's how it's set up. I can't use the dashes. So I wish that you could use dashes in Notion. I don't need them. I just would like them because I can still accomplish the same things. I just have to retrain my brain to be like, no, bullet points are not to do. So those are notes now. <laughs> Maybe there is a way to use dashed points, but I have not figured it out. So if there is, let me know in the comments. The last thing I want to talk about before we get into a little conclusion here is the mobile apps, the mobile versions of these tools. So Asana on the computer, I don't think is an app that you download. It is just used on a website, whereas Notion is actually an app you download. And Asana and Notion both have mobile apps. So I have both of them on my iPad and my phone. And I will say when I first downloaded Asana's app, it was terrible. I hated it so much. I think they've done an update since then though because I've gotten on it more recently and it is actually all right. It's much more usable, I think. I commend both of them for keeping the web feel mobily. So even though you're on a mobile device, it still gives you most of the functionality as on your computer. I think Asana a little bit more than Notion because there are some things that Notion does not let you do when you're on mobile. So on my phone, if I try to do a slash template or slash anything that's not just like a text box, it doesn't look like it lets me do it, but it does on my iPad. So I'm not really using Notion that much on my phone because I don't like the way it makes the page look super squished. And I also can't like do some of those things that I can do on my computer and my iPad. But for me, when I'm planning my day, I'm usually doing it on my iPad or on the computer anyways. So I can use my phone just to look at the pages or just to check something off that I've done, but I'm not really using it to interact a whole lot with my pages on Notion. So lastly, why might you want to use one versus the other? We'll start with Asana. It's great for big projects with a lot of little pieces and involving other people in that process. You can assign tasks to certain individuals, leave notes for each other, and you can do all of that with the free version. It's more focused on project management and getting your whole project done without a lot of extras to distract you or your team. It's probably really good for businesses, small businesses, especially right now when everybody is doing everything virtually, it is a good way to manage those projects between a bunch of people in a bunch of different places. And Notion. It has much, much, much more than project management capabilities. It is so much more customizable. But that can also be quite distracting as you go down a rabbit hole, trying to figure out how to do something and setting up a plan and never taking action on those steps. It is basically a digital bullet journal and that is how I'm using it. I think it's really good for individuals looking for a way to plan everything not just work or big projects. After using both of these apps for months, I've concluded that for my needs, Notion is better. I enjoy having everything in one place and I've been enjoying moving data from my bullet journal to Notion and how easy it is for me to interact with the data and manipulate the data on Notion. But I could see uses for both. I could see where Asana would be better or where Notion would be better. And I hope that this video gives you a little bit more detail about 
both of these apps and what might be useful for you and your team or your life or your work or whatever you are looking for a productivity app for. Now I know that there's a ton more productivity apps out there, but these are the two that I have used in the last six months. I would love to hear Eel's opinion down in the comments. I would also love to hear about other productivity apps down in the comments. I know there's a huge Notion community and I'm slowly getting into those videos, but I know that there's probably other apps out there that are awesome too, and I'd love to hear about them. I'd love to know about them. So please let me know. Before I close out this video, I wanted to do a little update because Notion was down last night and into this morning, the day that I am posting this video. And so I would be remiss if I didn't comment on this outage in today's video. So the sit down portion of this video was filmed before the Notion outage. For me, this outage lasted less than a day. I still had access to my up-to-date data on my phone and my iPad. Everything except the templates that I had made for myself. Luckily, it came back online in time for me to do the screen recording of the Notion clips that you guys saw in this video. With all of my data up to date, despite the fact that I interacted with the old data before I realized it was old. Roughly a, a week old, my Notion on my computer had reverted to about a week ago. So I was working off of my phone for a little bit because it had my up-to-date data. This outage highlights the necessity for offline mode and locally stored data. From what I've read, this is not the first time Notion has gone down for a period of time, and it's unacceptable to people that rely on this app to be productive, such as myself. At this time, I am not looking for another app, though I have said in this video that I will review other productivity apps if you leave them down in the comments. I really like Notion and I want to keep using it. I was able to use the workarounds that people generously offered on the Reddit. The r slash Notion community is strong and they are helpful. For people not so tech savvy though, this is going to cause them to go look for other more reliable apps. And I hope that Notion takes this to heart that offline mode and locally stored templates needs to be at the top of their priority list. Yeah, okay, back back to the video, back to the good quality camera and not my webcam. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you never miss a video from me. And I will see you guys next time. Bye, y'all.